Hi, Lauren. Welcome to your spotlight. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. So <laughs> in order to start, I would love it uh, if you just told everybody a little bit about who you are and where you live. Definitely. So my name is Lauren. I'm 30 years old. I'm originally Canadian. Um, you'll probably be able to tell from the accent. It's pretty strong. I've been a teacher <laughs> for the past four years. Um, the past two have actually been at an international school in Asia. So that's been really interesting. I have a passion for travel. And um, this year I actually quit my teaching job and I'm now traveling for a year partially um, due to the inspiration of finishing and completing this um, program with you. Amazing. Yes. And yes. we are recording live from Melbourne, Australia. Yes. You are I'm live currently in Melbourne. Australia. Yes. <laughs> I am still in Canada here holding down the fort for you, but you'll, yes, oh. everyone will enjoy our Canadian accents. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so tell everybody a little bit about what, the, uh, what frustrations you had with, with your body before you started the program. Um, in all honesty, I had quite a few frustrations with my body. Uh, and it started at a pretty young age. I was trying to think, really, have I been happy with my body or even neutral with my body? And I really can't remember a time when I was. Uh, since a little girl, about grade four, I became aware that I wasn't an acceptable body size um, based on kind of society and other pressures and expectations. And so ever since I was a little girl, I was really unhappy with my body. You know, if it was my stomach or, you know, my weight or my hair, anything like that, it was just a mixture of everything um, up until this year. And I'm 30 years old. So it's been over 20 years, I think, of body unhappiness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you yeah. were, you were in the whole dieting game too. Like you were pretty invested in that. I know we've talked about that obviously privately, but do you want to just yes. talk about what your relationship with, with food was like as well? Yeah. So, um, in my youth and I guess my teenage years, uh, it was a lot of binge eating. I was really unhappy. And I think I was just, you know, I was wanting to look a certain way and my body just wasn't that way. So, um, when I, got to university when I was about 18, 19, 20, that's when I started to really um, trickle into dieting and more so disordered eating, I would say now. So I um, severely would restrict what I ate and then I would compulsively exercise um, and I lost quite a bit of weight. And, you know, the compliments started coming in and I started getting more attention and um, I was feeling really good, but I was starving myself and I um, wasn't the shape that I should have been. So um, what ended up happening is after, you know, a year or two of being at a lower weight, I ended up gaining all the weight back because, um, you know, my body wanted to get back to the healthy size. So for the past 12 years, I've been going up and down quite a bit. Um, so I would restrict myself, you know, get down to a smaller weight. And then unfortunately, well, fortunately, my body is healthy and it was trying to get me back to that healthy weight, but I wasn't happy with that weight. So it was up and down yo-yo dieting, disordered eating, um, for, you know, the past decade, which is pretty exhausting. Yeah. What made you decide to be done with it? Um, a few things. So the first thing was, uh, like I said, I've been a teacher. I've been working with junior high school students in specific, and, um, I have a, a strong connection with my students. So I've been involved with a lot of different girls groups and I led a girls group this year for junior high school girls. And I saw their struggles, you know, at a young age, at 13, 14, 15 years old. And I was trying to encourage them to accept the, their body and love their body. And um, I, I felt really kind of hypocritical because in all honesty, I was thinking, wait a sec, I don't feel this way about my body. Mm -hmm. I'm 30 years old and I need, I need to change something. So in the end, it was, you know, that kind of was a, one of the catalysts. But also for me, um, I was sick and tired of it. I was constantly obsessing over my weight, over my body, how I looked, what other people thought. And I was so sick and tired of it. And I realized I'm putting so much time and energy into this and I'm capable of so much more. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much more to life. And I just wasn't 
yeah, wasn't living it. Right. So yeah. I was ready for a change. Good. Nice. Well, I knew that when you came in and you really <laughs> dove right into it, which is, which is always really great to see. So why don't you talk about some of the things that really helped you along the way or some of the experiences that you had that you felt really, um, benefited you? Yeah. So there's a few, the overall, I, I love the program. It was great. And yeah, I definitely just did dive right in. I was more than ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the few things that I have written down here that really kind of stood out to me was first the naming of that negative self talk or that voice. Yeah. So y- you call it like our doppelganger, right? Yeah, yeah. So I actually named it. And in the past, whenever I heard that negative self talk or I, you know, changed a thousand times or checked my hair, or my makeup before leaving the house. I would just try to suppress it and I would get really angry with myself. But you taught us to name it. And I named mine my childhood nickname. Yeah. And I thought of her as a child, like when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And I had a dialogue with her and um, I gave myself kind of some self-compassion. And instead of shaming her, I worked with her. And yeah. that was so instrumental and huge for me. The other things were the coaching calls. I really enjoyed those. So talking to you and letting out these thoughts that I've been having my whole life that I had never let out to anyone else. And you just giving the feedback and also hearing the other women's stories Mm -hmm. and being able to relate to them, right? Um, That was amazing. And then the support of the other women and you in the Facebook group is so awesome. Like if you're having a, a challenge or a really good day or a struggle or if you want to post pictures or just like you want some opinions or news, you can post it in the group. And then the women are all there to support each other. It's such a supportive community and you feel so encouraged. You feel like you belong and you're connected with this powerful group of women, which is absolutely amazing. So I think those three things specifically stood out for me. Yeah. That's so great to hear. I, and I remember you making space for those, like for the negative self-talk, like just really exploring, like, where did this come from? Like what part, Oh yeah. you know, what part of me does this really come from? And like, what does she need? And, um, opening yourself up to that. And I think that that's like, yeah, it's such a beautiful thing to witness. So I, I feel really grateful that I got to you know, just kind of be the one to, to guide you. And then you took, take it and, and, and see how powerful that can be. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the group is amazing. Like this, this time around again, as always, it's just like this incredible Mm -hmm. group and you guys support each, support each other so well. It's so supportive. And like, it's amazing to me how, you know, on the internet, I would have never thought, like I've told this to you before, I would have never thought in all my life that I would be in this group of women that I've met over the internet. And it's just, I feel like just so connected with them and they're so empowering. And I mean, I, you know this, but I met one recently yeah. and it was just so awesome. Like it's somebody in your corner supporting you and just, you're able to have these intense talks with each other. It's just amazing. Yeah. And that was Rob. I don't think she would mind. She's been on the spotlight too. So people who, who like remember from the last time we did a round of episodes like this back in March, it was Rob and from Australia. So Mm -hmm. I was so happy. That was like the greatest thing I've (laughs) ever seen was the picture of you two together. I just thought that was like the the most rewarding, one of the most rewarding things that I've witnessed in my career as a coach. So (laughs) well, it's all because of you, honestly. (laughs) Oh, it's, it's was amazing, honestly. Yeah. And I just, yeah, the, just, you, you know, we understand each other, we get each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think if all women did things like this, it would be so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of the, what are some of the specific things that you notice in yourself now that are, that are different since you've done this work? Yeah. So quite a bit of things. So I'm definitely on the pathway to feeling so much more liberated um, with my body, but just more internally too. Like, I don't really care what people think or if I don't want to do something or if I don't want to wear something, I just, I just don't, you know, like last night I was out for dinner with some people and I wanted to leave after dinner and they were all kind of doing something. And it's like, I want to go, like, I don't need to stay. I just feel like I can be more free and I'm, 
I'm more positive about my body, but I'm just kind of learning to be neutral with it and more comfortable with it. It's not that I'm like, Oh, I love it all the time, but I just, yeah, I just feel more comfortable. Um, those are really important. And I think to just continuing to be, I always have been independent, but I think this has given me more, um, encouragement to, to continue my independence. Um, just a lot of people I know, you know, in my age have been getting married back home and all of that kind of stuff. And I've been like, Oh, I need to do that. I need to settle down. But now I'm like, no, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I still want to travel. I still want to, you know, be adventurous and do these things. So why not do it while I can? So it's kind of given me, given me the power to, to continue on this path. That's maybe unconventional. Yeah, I remember we had a discussion around that because you were contemplating coming back or if I correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I, that's, that's what I'm remembering. Right. Yes. But I remember we talked about this and how, and how like the, you know, the, the independence and the adventure was just such a part of you and really mm -hmm. a part of your values. And so continuing to keep, um, honoring those by continue, you know, taking this time to travel was going to be a more fulfilling experience for you. Yeah, exactly. And it's hard because I think a lot of us are perfectionists and we want to um, do what kind of society is telling us to do. And we want to fit in that mold and be, you know, everything that our families want us to be and our friends and society. But it's hard going against the grain. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I should be, but it's it was difficult. And I think really the program gave me that encouragement and support to do that. Mm -hmm. Were there any highlight moments for you that stood out? Like, I know I remember when you posted the photo of you in the group and you were, yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. I totally forgot about that one, but that one's a really good one. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, honestly. Yeah. So that was a really good one. So, uh, yeah, I was doing a really cool project in Laos um, with some teachers and some kids at a, you know, at a lower socioeconomic status. And I remember I, the day was so amazing. It was one of the most amazing travel stories slash just personal stories that I've ever kind of encountered. It was really moving and touching. And, um, I was so connected with the community and I remember just loving the day and then looking at the pictures afterwards and being like, Whoa, I, look, you know, I felt I looked a certain way. And I, it was almost like that moment, I just like ripped it up away from myself. Everything that I had in that moment, I just took away, you know, because I, I felt I looked a certain way. Yeah. And looking back, I'm like, wow, it's just so powerful. So what I did was you encouraged me to post the picture also put one as a profile picture and now I almost I'm like yeah I'm re-owning that experience and I'm not going to take anything away from that experience because that was so valuable to me and I loved it and just because I perceived I was looking a certain way I think that's absolutely ridiculous it's not about how I looked it's about how I was feeling in the moment right yeah. and so it's like owning that and getting over that, like, you know, I posted the pictures and I looked sweaty. I looked glowing. I looked happy. I was surrounded by amazing colleagues and in this awesome location. And it just, I wasn't about to let a picture of my perceived, you know, this diet mentality or this societal expectation take away all of that from me in that moment. And with you guys, you know, the women and you encouraging me along the way, I just reclaimed that moment, right? And now I remember it for what it was. Yeah. It was amazing. And yeah, I'll never forget it. And it's so ridiculous letting a picture have that control over you. Right? Yeah. Well, it's not, it, I mean, yeah, it, it feels that way, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And in, in the moment, it's like, it is, it really like, it you know, sucks away our soul literally in yes. that moment. But yeah, I mean, you worked through it and were able to reclaim it and then own it. And now, um, well, I mean, have you looked at the picture again to just like, see, like, how do you feel about it now when you see it? Oh, completely different. I think in that moment, like it almost like deflates initially when you see a picture of yourself, sometimes you're so hard on yourself, but then looking back, 
I no, I don't think that what I thought in the moment at all. Now I look back and I'm like, it was an amazing experience. It was, you know, one of the top 10 experiences of my life. Like I'm not going to let, you know, yeah, I had to work through it and it was definitely for the better. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. What were the other highlight moments for you? Cause I just planted one. <laughs> no, had, that's you totally had fine. That you had thought of. <laughs> No, I, you know what, in all honesty, when I was thinking about this, it was really just owning my body and not feeling obligated to fit into what I used to feel I should, how I should act, how I should look like just coming back to me and myself and not yet yeah, trying to impress anyone, just being myself, you know, and that was really good. And just moving when I wanted to move resting when I wanted to rest, you know, playing self-care, all of those like little things that I wasn't really doing for me, which doesn't seem maybe so revolutionary, but really is, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is the little things and they make a big impact over time. So Mm -hmm. how did it feel to do all of those things? Um, for me, I have just a feeling of complete liberation. Um, and just, I feel more authentic. I feel like I can be more vulnerable to like to myself, but also to other people. I'm more genuine, I think to myself. And I think I really realize that I'm the most important piece of the puzzle. Like it doesn't really matter what everyone else thinks. I mean, still I'm affected. It's a, I'm a work in progress, Yeah, totally. but overall it's me that's important and coming home to myself. Mm-hmm. That's important. Nice. I love hearing that. That's so cool. And um, you mentioned when we first started that like this, you traveling, like you being in Melbourne, that Mm -hmm. you felt like the work we did together influenced this path that you're on right now. Can you just elaborate a little bit on on that? Um, Well, yeah, in all honesty, I just feel like I could have stayed probably in like a box of what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, in all honesty, I had a really good job. I was making quite a bit of money. I could have stayed in, you know, the profession I was in and financially I would have been good. I would have looked good maybe on the outside, but on the inside, I think I would have been feeling really unfulfilled. And so I just needed to continue, or I felt like I needed to be come back, be true to myself. And I felt like I needed to keep adventuring. So, you know, I spent the past six weeks traveling in different countries in Asia, and now I'm in Australia, I'm in Melbourne, and I'm feeling way better. I think about myself just being in this country instead of if I think of even a year ago, if I would have come here, I wouldn't have been ready. Like, I feel like it all happened at the right spot, the right timing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just feel good to be here. You know, I feel like I can, uh, I think Melbourne is going to be a good place for me right now. (laughs) Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, what's a piece of advice that you have for others? I think the biggest thing is that women and, or anyone who's listening, um, we're, we're so much more than how we look, our weight, um, our size. I think that I've realized it's a huge waste of time, in all honesty, spending time worrying about those things. We're capable of so much more. Like, my passions, I'm still finding my passions because I feel like I've suppressed them for so long. But, you know, we need to be involved with things that we love to do, right? Um, Before, I was obsessed with perfectionism, um, and I was never happy. I was never going to be happy. I was never slim enough. I was never pretty enough. I was never smart enough. But now I've realized that I am amazing (laughs) and I can do so many awesome things. Like, you know, I, I started writing recently and I'm really proud of the work that I've, you know, written. Um, and you know, being an amazing city with all this culture and art, I can't wait to just dive in and just see what I'm capable of. I think that that's really important. Like women and, you know, again, anyone men too, we're worth so much more. And I think it's also really important that we encourage and support each other. That's a big thing too. Uh, We need to, we really, really need to. Um, And I think it's important for us to be listening to our body because I feel like it's the most revolutionary thing that we can really do. 
Um, especially because we're living in such a patriarchal society. We need to break that down and just really be true to ourselves. Yeah. Nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I can't wait for you to listen back to that because it was really good. <laughs> oh, good. I hope so. Yeah. So do you have anything else that you want to add before we close it out here? Anything else that you wanted to say that we didn't get to? Uh, I think that is it. I mean, in all honesty, I mean, you, you did not tell me to say this, but I would so encourage, I would so encourage, I tell women about your program all the time oh, cool. because it is honestly like I'm going to start to tear up. It was life changing for me. And I just appreciate so much the work that you do. I'm going to start and to I'm, tear up too because I have my period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like we, we are capable of so much and like, you know, you're giving us the tools. We have the tools, but you're showing us what we're capable of. And it's so powerful. And we, if more women did this, I think that the world would be such an amazing place. <laughs> thank so you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my God. That was really kind of you. <laughs> of <course. laughs> well, I love you. You did, you did no. so well. Cause I know that we went to some hard places when we did this Yes, and you know, there's a lot of like ups and downs through this process and you really fought through it. And, um, like advocated for yourself, like you wanted this for yourself, even if that meant going through some uncomfortable spots or making yes. some difficult decisions. And I think that, you know, that just really speaks to your strength and your resiliency and your courage and your perseverance and like all of these amazing gifts that you bring to the world. And, um, I love seeing you out, like just living all of your passions, like just, I know we had a conversation earlier about you wanting to explore like the music and the art and the, all this, the, mm. all this stuff in Melbourne. And I just think it's so cool. And if you do teach again, you're going to, you're going to make such a, an amazing mark on this. I know you did already, but it's just <laughs> going to be even more amplified now. So uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for doing this today. Um, I really, no really problem. appreciate it. Oh, uh, no problem. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much, Summer. Rock on. Hi, Evelyn. Welcome to your spotlight. Hi. <laughs> so tell everyone a little bit about who you are, where you live. Yeah, my name is Evelyn and I live in the Netherlands uh, in a small town called Leiden. Um, yeah, that's about it. Very good. And talk about the frustrations that you had with your body or and or food before we started working together yeah so before we started working together i um i was so frustrated because i was always so obsessed about eating the right things um about not eating the unhealthy food and you know really being very angry with myself if i did eat the the, the wrong foods or the unhealthy foods such as chocolate too much uh, I was just so frustrated with always thinking about it, even when I decided to let go of that because of your amazing Facebook group. Uh, I actually started this journey, like trying it on my own and trying to just allow myself to eat everything. But even even though my behavior had changed, like I was trying to just eat everything, my thoughts and my feelings hadn't changed about food or about my body or about, you know, I was just so scared of gaining weight and getting out of control it was just yeah, like I was literally obsessing about it all of the time and it was so exhausting yeah and I think your I, if I recall correctly like you came your background or what you had experienced before was you were very much invested in like health um, and in case those of you that are listening and not seeing this I'm, we're putting air quotes around <laughs> these words when we talk about health. Um, uh, so you were very much obsessed with with like health, and so you yeah. wanted to come out out of that because it had caused it was causing that frustration and obsession in your life. Exactly, exactly. I was so uh, I had come from a background of clean eating. Again, I'm I'm putting air quotes in as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nothing really clean about food. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, so I had this really strong sense of what was, what were the right foods to eat, what were the wrong foods to eat. I mean, 
I think a lot of people can relate because the media nowadays, they just, you know, throw it at you all the time. Like sugar is the devil. And all those thoughts were just instilled in me. And I was just, yeah, it was really hard for me to let go of those feelings and to let go of those beliefs about food. And also about the perception that being fat is a really terrible thing to terrible thing to become. And yeah, I was so scared of getting out of control, gaining weight. And yeah, it just actually, it made me, um, it's really stopped me from just living my life the way I wanted it to, because I was so thinking about it so much that, yeah, Mm -hmm. that was huge frustration for me. Yeah. Yeah. And so what prompted you to decide to change? So there was this one night when um, I had been working out and I, I, I literally um, caught myself having thought about the question, should I eat ice cream or not for over half an hour, like straight, like with, without any interruptions, just repeating the question over and over again in my mind. And I, I just, you know becoming a little bit more familiar with your work through your Facebook group and through your um, your blog posts, etc., your podcasts, I noticed that, that this was going on within me because before I wouldn't even notice that it was something strange or something, you know? Uh, so I was like, whoa, this is really, really eating me up. It's really, you know, consuming me almost. And I went to your Facebook group uh, and I asked advice at all the amazing women who are out there. Um, and I was like, okay, so the question is not just like, should I eat ice cream or not? But it's like so much more and so much deeper. And I got so many wonderful comments of people saying, just screw it. I, I think you're so afraid of, you know, gaining weight. That's probably what's, you know, um, what's keeping you obsessed about this question. Just let go, just surrender, <laughs> give yourself full permission. And I decided then and there to do it. However, uh, like I said before, um, that was not enough for me. I mean, it took me another two months to actually decide to get help and coaching from you because, um, yeah, it, it was still something I thought about a lot. So now maybe I did have that ice cream or I did have that chocolate or, you know, I just I tried to give myself permission. But in my head, it was still like the black and white of the good and the bad food was still there and the black and white about you know, good bodies and bad bodies and, uh, yeah, going out of control, etc. Those, those anxieties, those fears were still there. And I really, I just really needed help to, yeah, to get rid of those and to really, Mm -hmm. really, yeah, overcome those. Yeah. And I like, it's so important to recognize that piece that you mentioned about you took half an hour to think about whether you should or shouldn't eat ice cream like that's when I talk about you know diet culture sucking away our resources you think about that that's 30 minutes of time of mental energy that could be either used for just recharging and self-care or something that is going to add fulfillment to your life or something more purposeful and so we don't even realize we think that that's normal and so um yeah I mean kudos to you for recognizing like this is not right. <laughs> and I, th- this needs to change. Because I think it's, it's so embedded and it's so normalized that we should just be thinking about food all the time and questioning things. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, 30 minutes of time, if you think about that, cu- accumulating over our lifetime every day, or multiple yeah. times a day, it's like, how much time are we taking away from from really living. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. Um, (laughs) But uh, talk to me a little bit about what some of the um, stepping stones were that helped you along the way. Mm -hmm. So there were so many things there in your program and your coaching that really helped me. So the first really big one for me was um, in our or literally our first conversation, you gave me full permission, something that I had already, you know, read in your blog post or, you know, (laughs) heard people or read people uh, talk about that. But just hearing it from you to me was so, so profound. And so I just really needed to hear that. I mean, it sounds, I get a little bit emotional even talking about it now because it's so it's 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 a whole different world if someone actually you know takes the time to listen to your story and then says Evelyn 
you have full permission to eat anything you want, everything you want, whenever you want it. And yeah, I mean, it's it's about so much more than food, obviously, but it, I, I really needed that. I really needed to hear that. And just also you really, um, how do you say that? You really reassured me that this is a journey that you have been guiding so many women in. And I was like, yeah, but... <laughs> For me, maybe it's going to be different, you know, I'm going to be the one that's going to get out of control and I'm going to be the one that's going to get diseases and going to get unhealthy by just eating everything I want. I was just so afraid, not trusting myself, not trusting my body and you reassuring me that, yes, you can trust yourself and this will take a little bit of time, but you will absolutely get to the other side. It's just, yeah, that's like... The, the best thing in the world so that's good and that's really like the first conversation right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes and it was like there was so much more in the program and in your coaching like um also really important to me was buy bigger clothes also it sounds so simple it sounds so like it's not even about that it's about so much more and emotional stuff and we go through so much in the program but sometimes these simple pragmatic things are the things that you really need to actually be able to make room for those emotional layers that you go into in the program so buy bigger clothes so that you know when I noticed that I was gaining weight and I I just kept getting reminded of that and kept you know getting thrown back into oh my god this is so bad no buy bigger clothes that's what you told me buy bigger clothes and just I just allowed my body to be. That was also a huge step. Um, and I don't know. I just I can keep on going. I have another one, which is, um, yeah, just being in the group and also um, just seeing so many stories, hearing so many stories from so many different people and also your advice on um, – submerging yourself I don't know if that's the correct term in images of bodies of women who are larger than my own body which is something you don't see very often in the regular media it's some, something that has helped me as well like seeing the beauty in all different kinds of shapes colors whatever backgrounds just yeah that's helped me as well so yeah and so much more but these are just first that come to mind yeah I know and it's those little things that make a big impact like that those are you know steps that I talk about all the time they're in every single program that I run you know I and I think that they do tend to make a huge a huge difference uh and what they allow you to do like you said is then do the deeper emotional stuff that has to be done to really change your beliefs and unpack you know what where this stuff came from for you and like what's um What's going to make you feel more confident in in yourself now that you're not thinking about your body so much anymore? So yeah. the stuff about the um, the clothes and the social media, I think they really help you to just not think about your body so much anymore, and then you're able to kind of go into the deeper stuff and really you know build up self worth and um, um, you know uh, rid yourself of like so much perfectionism and black and white thinking and like all that other stuff that comes into play. Exactly. And I just want to add one more thing that was so helpful for me because something that was really hard for me as well, what I kept str struggling with was I know that a couple of people in my environment weren't uh, immediately on board with this mm -hmm. uh, new journey. So, for example, my boyfriend um, is a very rational person, a very, you know, he, he kind of believed in the health healthy unhealthy paradigm I was so invested in to a much more normal and sane degree by the way he, he did not have any eating problems or anything like that but I really noticed that this was something that was holding me back in the beginning of my journey because I was so afraid of what he was gonna say and maybe he was right you know it was something like, oh is he right maybe he's gonna um, or, or will he accept me if I do cho choose to go on this journey how do I get how do I get him on track as well? Because we were fighting actually in the beginning and um, your advice also really helped me in that department to really talk to him, to re really be able to explain what this meant to me, this journey, what I wanted to get out of it. And that was also a huge step because from the moment that he actually got it, it became so much easier to just follow the steps and get into the deeper emotional work. And I, I felt more supported instead of, 
you know, being held back by him, which yeah. is also so, so important. Yes, yeah. yes. Navigating those discussions is so important. So you were always so good about taking whatever we talked about and then putting it into action. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> yes, you're a good student. <laughs> Which I know can work to your detriment too. Because <laughs> it's like we're high achievers. But, <laughs> but it, it worked thing. really well in this program. <laughs> so uh, were there any highlight moments for you that um, that you can recall that I don't know, you did things differently or that really stood out for you? Well, like so many and like so many that right now already feel like the new normal for such a long time. But I distinctly remember wearing shorts for the first time. Just, you know, I, I wanted to say without caring. It's not exactly true because I did care, but I did it anyway. And I felt like, yeah. You know, I don't like the way my legs look, but it's okay. You know, I'm okay. I can just be here in this hot weather and wear my shorts and it's okay. I I get to do this. That was wonderful. Also, a lot of moments where um, like co-workers would, um, would, how do you say that? Celebrate their birthdays and bring treats to the office. And this would always be such a um, distraction for me in, during meetings because I would be um, going over and over in my mind, like, should I eat it? I want to eat it, but, you know, should I? Because it's really bad and <laughs> all that bullshit. Yeah. Something I noticed got so much easier. Like, for example, uh, one time someone brought chocolate donuts, which is something I really like. Um, and I actually remember thinking, like, after the meeting, like, oh, wow, I didn't even think about it. Like, for the first half hour, I wasn't really feeling it, so I didn't have one. And then I really wanted one and I had one and that was it. And I didn't give another thought about it. You know, it was just, I was in the meeting actually, you know, engaging with my coworkers instead of obsessing about should I have that chocolate donut or not? So, so many more moments, but these are two that really uh, stand out to me. That's so yeah. cool. That's so good. And I know like you've been doing um, just some work with, with like helping others with, with their own. Yeah perfectionism and, and body positivity as well um do you are you okay to just talk about the talk you did because I know you did a talk like you put yourself out there yeah. and you did a talk and yeah yeah I would love yeah. you to share that definitely so one of the things that really like is so huge for me in having completed this program and this coaching and um is that like we, we discussed before, it, it freed up so much of my mental space to actually start doing the things I really wanted to do. Turns out, I don't think food is that interesting as I thought it was. I don't. I don't give a rat's ass about food. <laughs> <laughs> Curse, but um, so I don't give a damn about that. What I do give a damn about is helping other women feel great, just like you do every day. I mean, such an inspiration. And um, I actually at one point had a talk at the plus size store about accepting yourself, being okay in your body. It was just so great. And after that, I've actually also um, started my own coaching business or I had already started it, but picked it up at a new level. And right now I'm just helping women overcome their perfectionism, not necessarily only related to body image, but just in a, in a much broader sense. But it's like the work that lights up my soul every day and I'm so grateful to be able to have that mental space there to, to just do this work and yeah I can just oh, I want everyone to experience that same thing yeah. because just the best so amazing and I feel like that's what it's all about when I was I was talking about this with somebody recently about um you know doing this work really puts you in a position to make an impact on the culture and, you know, it doesn't have to be through coaching. It can mm -hmm. just be through, um, you know, whether you're just a better role model to somebody else in, in your life or your kids or you um, have time so you go and volunteer somewhere, which I know people I've worked with before have, have done. Um, it just allows you to, like you said, like find something that really feeds your soul, that really fires you up, that um, gives you just uh, uh, that sense of, of, of purpose and meaning. And I think it's, that's, what's so amazing about it. That's what I love the most about this. When things come full circle, I think it's like the gravy is being able to sit in the meeting and not think about the donut, but the real, like the real 
thing that I love seeing is when there's like this impact left on the world in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything hugely profound. Like I, I said, you know, it doesn't have to mean you go and like work in an ashram or anything like that, but it's just like, you know, doing little things, it starts to make a difference. So I just wanted to reiterate that again, because I, I love hearing that. So I'm so, so happy for you. Also something that is not even related to like work or, or something like that, but just, I think this is something I've heard, from a lot of the women in your programs, which is our partners, our friends, our family generally say after this program, like we're so much nicer to be around and and not to say that, oh, women should be nicer. I'm not saying that at all, but like we become a little bit, you know, more okay with ourselves, a little bit more relaxed. And that actually makes us more fun to be around and also more forgiving and accepting towards others, which is, just yeah also what the world really needs I think yeah yeah that's so true that's such a good point too so how does this feel for you how does it feel to be living your life now it actually feels fucking great (laughs) (laughs) I can't say it any other way just uh, I mean it's not like I live a fairy tale life obviously because we all know that's not something that's really a thing but I'm just so thankful that I get to actually listen to myself listen to what I want to do listen to what I want to mean in the world or just add to the world um without being distracted with all that stuff about body image or about food or about all those things that really just don't make anyone a better person or happier it's just yeah I'm so thankful yeah good how do you feel in your body now I feel good in my body. I feel okay. I don't think that I ever felt, well, not not ever, but I wasn't in a place where I felt horrible in my body per se. I was just so anxious um, and so scared that my body would get out of control or just I would get weight endlessly, endlessly. And and I was so, so I was maybe okay-ish with where I was at that point, but I was always scared that I was going to get bigger. Um, And right now I'm like, besides the fact that bigger is not you know it's not worse it's just bigger that's something that's a huge relief and also I'm like it's okay you know my body is going where it wants to go it's okay I'm just it's fine I'm yeah. here that's that's what that's all that matters yeah that's what it's all about yeah I mean because before it was like conditional right when you yeah. it was conditional it was like oh exactly. it changes and like every my life is going to be yeah. horrible um and exactly. so yeah getting to a point where it's like yeah it's fine <laughs> that's honestly the best thing I could ever ask for with people it's just like this is yeah. what it is yeah and I'm not afraid anymore <laughs> yeah that's great so good uh what's uh do you have a piece of advice for people listening well definitely all the things that I learned so really trust yourself really just go for it go for that thing that you know you want to do go for the dream that you want to go after and if it takes some help please get the help because I know I sure needed it and I I wasn't able to you know do this all on my own and we're all here for you you know just reach out maybe join the program I know it sure it helped me so so much to just not have to do it all on my own just be guided and be coached all the way through um just yeah if that's something that other women can do as well and need it i just highly recommend it so yeah thank you thank you anything else you want to add (sighs) no just thank you i'm just i'm so happy i got to know you summer (laughs) (laughs) i wanted to add just yeah you you have no idea i think you do have an idea but you have no idea (laughs) what (laughs) just your presence in the world and in my world has has meant to me and yeah oh thank you thank you so much thank you so much well your presence in this world means so much to me the fact that you trusted me and um yeah and 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 decided to you know seek out my my help uh you know working with you was always such a pleasure you were oh you were always just there and shared whatever was going on and then took whatever came out of 
our time together, put it into action and progressively worked at this. So, you know, you, you are just such a wonderful person. You have so many gifts to give and, you know, I see you just like doing well in all these different areas of your life and following your dreams. And I think it's just, it's amazing. So thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It was amazing to catch up and, and just, you know, recount all of the memories that we had together. <laughs> yeah. So cool. So cool. Yeah. Rock on. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Welcome to your spotlight. Hi, Summer. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be doing this and happy to support the uh, program with you. I'm so happy to have you here. It's so lovely. You have such a beautiful room behind you, too, by the way. Oh. <laughs> it's Thank so you. cozy and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and it's getting cold here now. It yeah. feels like autumn's coming. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so well, tell everybody a little bit about who you are, where you live. Yeah, I'm Laurie. I live in Norwich in England and I am a Qigong instructor, which is, you've probably heard of Tai Chi. So if you haven't heard of Qigong, just think Tai Chi, but without the martial element, just well-being. <laughs> nice. I love it. And you're a mom too. Yeah, I've got a five-year-old son and uh, I also have a stepdaughter and step stepson um, from my my uh, my husband and uh they live with us sometimes it's always so great when they're here um life is good <laughs> nice good so why don't you tell everyone a little bit about how you were feeling in your body or about your body um uh, before we started working together yeah so for me it was really um i think i realized it was a bit deeper there's a deeper issue than my body before we started working together. But I really wanted as well for my body to not be a problem for me, to not feel ashamed of my my body and, you know, always wanting to cover up. I just wanted to not care. Mm -hmm. That's it. But um, I'd really learned from a very young age that appearance really did matter or that's what I thought. That's what I learned as a child. And uh, it kind of shaped my life for 30 years where I just was completely convinced that if I just looked right, I would be confident and everything else would just just follow. And so really, I kind of discovered in those 30 years that that wasn't the case because I did manage. I thought I could control my weight. Can't really control what you look like, but yes, you can control your weight. So I really focused on that with dieting and I just, I just tried everything and, um, you know, where it led me was just this horrible place of starving, binging and compensating. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was really quite, quite ill with it and nobody really, nobody knew cause I didn't look like I was ill or that I wasn't eating enough, but actually I really, looking back, it was just ridiculous um, how much I was taken in, probably less than a child, and really pushing myself with exercise as well, and you know, this really does affect your health and your mental well-being as well. So, you know, that I realise now, and I, I realised some time ago, dieting, restricting just isn't, you know, changing your appearance is not the answer. So I was looking for something else. And I came across uh, body positivity and, um, and you and, and quite a few other um, coaches. And I just really got something from you that I, I really felt I needed that was going to help me to, to break away from the idea that I needed to change this because it was still in there. And I, I, know, I, I stopped dieting like five years ago and restricting. And I thought, yeah, this is great. Um, I'm doing mindful eating. It's fantastic. But every time something came up where I had to put myself on the line, I would just have this urge to either restrict or binge. And I thought, I don't understand what's going on here. I don't understand what's, what's wrong with me. 
that I feel this, I still feel driven that this could be a solution when I know it's not. So I, I needed to do something else. I needed to find something else to, to help me get through it. Yeah. So. yeah. And how did you want to feel like before we started, what did you feel was missing or like, how did you want to feel? Yeah, I wanted to feel like I was enough. Mm -hmm. I wanted to I wanted to feel like, so I had my son and I looked at him and I just thought, this is a miracle. I love him so much. I don't care what he looks like. I don't actually really care much what he achieves in his life. I just love him. And then I just, I just had this idea that if I wanted him to do that, I should be able to do that for myself. Yes. I should be yes. able to role model that to him. But also I felt really deeply that actually everyone deserves to feel that way about themselves. Somehow I've ended up in this place where I, I don't value my values. Actually, I don't even know what my values are because I've spent all my life too scared to have an opinion, too scared to put myself out there on the line where I might be judged or rejected. I don't know who I, I don't really know who I, who I am. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense to me. Because I, I think that's exactly what I see in people. Um, yeah. I don't know if everyone identifies with it from that start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's exactly it is that, you know, our identity gets really tied up in our body or a quest to lose weight and, um, or food or fitness or whatever it is. And yeah, we, lo we lose not, not for everybody, but for a lot of people, we lose touch, or we don't even know, you know, who, who we are, what we what really fulfills us. So yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember you saying that about your son. Like I remember that in one of the calls, I think where you yes. use that, you were just like, I look at my son and he, you know, I just think he's, he's, I love him regardless. And I, yeah. I think we all deserve that. And I remember I get goosebumps cause it was such a beautiful statement. It's such a good way of, it's exactly oh. right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But it was, and it was just, I just didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I knew what I wanted, and I knew that it was the answer, but I didn't know how to get there. And uh, I, I really believe that, you know, I, this was five years ago, and I was just on this journey of wanting to heal <laughs> and wanting to give myself permission and to understand that my worthiness wasn't actually conditional on anything, not what I looked like or my achievements or anything, and neither was my son's. And uh, so, and it got me to you. And I'm so, so grateful for that because I've got what I wanted. Or I'm certainly on the way. I mean, sure, I also thought, wouldn't it be great if I just didn't feel um, ashamed of my naked body? Mm -hmm. That would be great too. <laughs> I didn't think that was likely, but I wanted, I thought that would be great. That would be amazing. I couldn't see, I couldn't see it as a possibility, but I didn't see that as the thing that I needed the most, if you know what I mean. I thought I can be neutral about my body. Um, it doesn't, but it's, it's this other thing, this idea of worthiness. Yeah. How to, how to get it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So what were some of the things that helped you along the way? The program is amazing, and the way that you've set it up, um, I just think it, almost everyone I know could benefit from from doing it. You get this amazing sense of support, um, and you feel safe to open up and be really vulnerable um, in this amazing community of other women who have their own stories but are going through the same thing, so they really understand you. You know, they really, really get it. And uh, not many people in my life, even if I see, I look at them and I think, I think I think I know what you're going through and you could really do with this, but they, they don't seem to realize it themselves. So it's hard to have meaningful conversations with, uh, with people. But in the group, the, the community that you created, the support, the acceptance, um, the advice, is amazing but then from the program itself that weekly the weekly um, missions that we had to do and 
the way that you in the coaching calls kind of challenge but in a soft way but you do you you make us go where we need to go mm -hmm. so having that that setup where you've got a mission to work through and then you can feed that into the coaching call and uh, obviously you pick up on, on what it is that you know the difficult question <laughs> that you have to ask yourself yes <laughs> put yourself there and when you do and when you say it out loud and you hear yourself saying it out loud you just think oh wow that I remember a specific coaching call where I was having a really bad night and it was the school holidays and my husband was away and I was trying to do because I'm self-employed and I was, I was like putting so much pressure on myself to be the perfect mum but to get the work done and I was going to have these days of fun and meaningful stuff with my son and then in the night I was going to crack on with work and it just didn't have it happen I didn't have that in me in the evenings and on this one evening where luckily it was the coaching call and I was just there thinking I was feeling like I wanted to stuff my face <laughs> is that okay to say that yeah yeah of course yeah yeah but I knew that's not going to fix it but I just had this agitation and this horrible feeling that was so familiar to me and it just so happened it was the coaching call and you said to me don't be a bad boss and you'd, you'd said that you'd had to say that to yourself. And, and I just realized I was being so hard on myself. And I hadn't realized, I hadn't realized that I was making unreasonable demands on myself. But in the coaching call, it became so obvious to me that that, that was what was happening. And, and that just opened up that way of looking at the whole of my life, making unreasonable demands on myself in the whole of my life. So... Yeah, and the visualizations, I loved doing those. I wanted to say the visualizations are so moving and really take you to such a, a they can take you to a beautiful place where you start to build real self compassion, nice. which is so essential for growth. It really is. So I loved those. And so, and, uh, and, yeah. so go ahead. <laughs> There's so much. <laughs> realizing that that voice where that voice was coming from was actually a place where we wanted to protect ourselves mm -hmm. it started to make so much sense looking back over um, my, my history and all the things that had hurt me so deeply and shaped how I was to live my life for the next 35 years so yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. thank you <laughs> oh you're welcome that's so amazing to hear I remember that conversation about the bad boss because I because it well, I you know your doppelganger is you're like your inner critic and I just I noticed it I was like who's you you have a real you have a real terrible boss <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I know that opened up a lot for that created the big change for you because I remember the next week and that, that yeah that was just one of those moments that it was like one sentence and you just totally shifted and you were like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't realize I was doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize I was still doing it. So yeah. um, having the support, having the having someone on the outside looking in mm -hmm. who's actually prepared to say it. <laughs> that's really valuable. It's, there's so much. There's so much connecting with your values and understanding that okay if your values aren't the values which are going to be validated by our society that we live in that's really tough mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that they're not valuable that doesn't mean that you have to abandon them because if you abandon them and try to fit in and meet some ideal that doesn't resonate with you then you're just empty yeah from where so many problems stem, that, em that emptiness. So Beautifully said. I learned, I learned a lot. Beautifully yeah. said. So do you remember anything that you did um, that was like a highlight moment for you? Yeah, it, I mean, uh, that coaching call was probably the real, like, punch you in the face. 
But I do also want to mention about some things which I've done, which are actually all about appearance. And it's from the perspective of um, having confidence in just showing up without the mask, without the makeup, without covering up. Um, because for me, it was really important to do, to actually do that, um, to go on the school run without makeup on and just look people in the eyes like this is me and it's okay. Mm -hmm. The thing, um, that, that actually turned out to be quite confidence building for me. So yeah. Um, and going on the beach. I mean, I had a real, I was really ashamed of how I felt that my husband's ex-wife is a very um, fit, very attractive, very sporty. And uh, I was really worried about going on the beach in my swimsuit with my step stepchildren because of the judgment, because of the comparison. And I just had to, you said to me, you don't get confident by thinking I want to be confident. You get confident by doing the thing that mm -hmm. is the thing you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And I just kept thinking that. And now it's just not a problem to me. Because it's that whole thing of if people were judging you, it says so much more about them. Mm -hmm. Because... I'm not judging anyone on what they look like, and I think that's the right way to be. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I can't, it doesn't follow that I allow the fear of people judging me on what I look like to affect me, because it's not, it actually isn't important to me. It's just something that I learned a long time ago was important, and it turns out that it, it's not, it's not important. So, <laughs> so good. So good. And how did that feel? Um, really uncomfortable <laughs> at first. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, really uncomfortable and very challenging. Um, but the world didn't stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Everything still carried on the same. People didn't go. <gasps> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. Of course it didn't. And uh, and then it just felt great. Then it just felt like, I just felt like I was opening up and being real as well. Not hiding anything because there's nothing to hide. So I just felt, I felt liberated from years of, um, you know, feeling inadequate. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And so how does it feel for you now? It feels like I'm on, it feels like I'm unstoppable and on a journey where there are limitless possibilities of what I am going to do in my life and nothing is going to hold me back. Wow. Um, nothing is going to hold me back anymore. So, and I really do have you to thank for that. I just found, I just found you at the right time. I wish I found you years ago but maybe that wasn't the right time for me so now is the time and uh, that that is how I feel I'm gonna do it whatever it is that's so amazing <laughs> like a hundred percent me I'm gonna have my opinion and that thing about somebody hates you like <laughs> it's okay it's okay if somebody doesn't agree with me if somebody doesn't like what I have to say if somebody doesn't like me that's okay I like me I'm okay with me and uh, I'm not out to hurt anyone or offend anyone. I just want to give myself permission to speak my truth. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Beautiful. Great. Amazing. Amazing. What's your advice for people who are listening? Do the program. Um, you will get so much more out of it than you could ever dream of. Um, at the very least, you're going to get out of it um, feeling good in your body. But I strongly suspect that you're going to get way, way more out of it than that. And it's going to change your life. 
and you're never going to look back. That's so great to hear. That's so good to hear. Well, you, I mean, you're wonderful. You, you, oh. you showed up, you really put yourself into it. And I know I pushed you outside of your comfort zone or you, you pushed yourself outside of your comfort zone with, with my guidance quite a few times. And I think that, um, you know, that just spoke to the, you know, the courage that you had and the determination that you had to, to really see this through and, and do this for, for yourself. And I think that you're going to be such an amazing role model to, um, to, you know, your stepkids and your son and also your clients. Cause I know that, you know, you being, um, an instructor or coach in a different capacity, but still just being able to share that message of, of, you know, of worthiness and you are enough in your work. And I think that you're, you know, you're going to help to change the culture too. So it's just so amazing to, uh, see how far you've come and to see how great you've been. I know in the last couple of coaching calls, like you hopped on and you were just like, I'm great. I just wanted to say I'm great. And that was it. <laughs> And it was like, perfect. <laughs> that's, that's like, a, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, and I do, I talk about you all the time to, to everyone who, who I meet and uh, about body positivity. And I started a little body positivity Facebook group in, in Norwich because I'm trying to connect with people nice. who are in that place where they want to move beyond the number on the scales and uh, just inspire them, you know, just inspire them that actually there is a different, there is a different way to live your life and it can be so good. And I spoke a lot about the body things I did, but also since then I've gone and spoken in front of people about Qigong um, and this is something that terrified me and uh, it feels really, really good to step up and talk about the thing that you love and you place value in and brings a lot of joy into your life and just have the courage to do it and that is something I've done since this this program too so it's not just about going on the beach in my bikini and all of that it's about stuff I've actually done which yeah. is being true to, to me amazing so. oh that's so <laughs> good to hear you're I'm so proud of you you've just been um such a gift to me and um, I thank you so much for, for being here today and for, and for sharing your story and for, for taking a chance with me and, <laughs> and, and doing this for yourself. I just think it's, it's just so, it's so great to catch up with you. Well, you are a great coach. Thank you. And you give, you give so much. You give so much. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. That means the world to me, Laurie. Thank you. Well, it's been such a pleasure. Oh, it's great to talk to you. Take care. Rock and up. I'll still be, I'll st you're not getting rid of me. I'm staying. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> That's great. I know. The community just grows. That's amazing. Rock on. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to your spotlight. Well, hi, Summer. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Well, I'm glad to, glad yeah. to be able to have this opportunity. Good. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about who you are? Yeah, so um, I am almost 50. I'll be 50 in a month. And I'm a mother and I'm a professional and a wife and juggle all these different roles that keep me quite busy, although my children are getting closer and closer to being grown. But um, yeah, life is full and blessed. Good. Excellent. And so why don't you talk a little bit about what your frustrations were with your body or food before uh, we started working together? Yeah. And so, you know, it, I'd been working around food and, and had given up um, dieting, or at least I thought I had, you know, a many, uh, several years ago. And like I said, you know, my life is quite full and I have a lot to be grateful for. And yet there was always this there was just way too much energy that was going towards thinking about my body, thinking about what I'm eating, feeling like I wasn't getting it right. And I had this sense that I, that there was, or at least I hope that there was a path to being more free from that. And, um, and so it was just kind of getting, you know, even though I had made steps towards realizing 
that, that dieting wasn't the answer and, um, had been doing a lot of work to be able to be present in my life. It just, there was still this wall. It felt like many times. And I just wanted to be able to figure out some, some tools or some ways to working with it to, to feel more free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So like, how did you want to feel? Yeah, I think I wanted, I had a sense of how much energy was going into this and I wanted to focus on other things. Mm -hmm. Um, it felt like, I mean, I, I was, I wasn't in the mindset where, oh, my life is going to be perfect if I lose weight or my body looked like this. Um, and yet there was this idea that once I got food kind of under control and once I got, you know, exercise where I was taking care of myself, well, then all of these other things might be possible. And so I don't think I, I really realized it at the time, how much I was doing that. I mean, how much I was kind of putting all these rules about when I could actually have my life. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes that so much of those expectations or conditions, I should say, we've put on ourselves are, are almost like subconscious. And, um, you know, a lot of that's due to cultural programming and also just, we we're just not aware of it when we're in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I think I wasn't aware of a lot of those, um, or at least explicitly aware of some of the, the cultural influences and, and how it wasn't just that I, you know, had somehow gone down the wrong path or, or, or gotten my head turned the wrong way at some point, but it's really like culturally and how much, how pervasive it is. And I'd gotten, I started to, um, become more aware during the couple of months before, um, I started with the program and started working with you and I was listening to podcasts and my eyes were starting to be opened and that was wonderful. And and yet I, there was a level of, of kind of awareness, at least um, cognitively I was aware, but as far as it being able to really get into me and, and change the way that I was just seeing the world on a regular basis, that was what I wanted to kind of jumpstart. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to have some support in really moving through that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And what were some of the key stepping stones that helped you along the way? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the work around actually looking at my body, I mean, both, you know, metaphorically and, and really, you know, actually looking at my body and seeing these thoughts that I had about my body and questioning them and, and, and doing that part of the work of, um, of just really, you know, seeing how, how silly or, um, it was in some ways about what was holding me back, you know, the what I would allow myself to wear and not wear and the, um, just the worry about what others might think and, and just this whole story that was so embedded. And so that was a piece of it. And that was kind of some of the early, the early parts of really being able to not, you know, and I, and I appreciated the way that you presented it so that there was a, a process to kind of go through and, and not, gradual so much is, but it wasn't like being thrown in, in the deep end, so to speak. And where on day one, we were supposed to all strip our clothes and stand in front of the mirror and just scream out, you know, love and for our bodies, it was more like, let's really look at this and let's really, um, understand what's maybe going on about these thoughts that we have about different body parts and our bodies in general. So that was kind of, I think one of the first pieces, but then I feel like what surprised me in a way was how much it became not about the body, you know, not about my body. Yeah. Um, and it became about my values and where was I holding back in my life and where was I, um, not letting myself have it all. And so that became like, I don't think I fully knew that that was be part of it, but it was so valuable because, and, and to start to see the relationship between um, how I'm not making space or allowing myself to have these different parts that I value about a life and how that was causing me to continuously come back to these negative self messages that, that there was just like, whenever something didn't, my life didn't feel 
right or full, then somehow the story was, it was because my body wasn't right. Yeah. And I wasn't aware of that. That wasn't, and it, and I started to see it. Like I would wake up and be kind of in a, you know, a funk or something was going on or some kind of crisis at work. And my mind would go back to that groove of like, oh, you need to change your body. You need to change your body. And it was really, you know, eye opening. Um, but it took that for me to be able to see and it, that it was possible to change that, that's that message or that groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so yeah. good. I, I, I mean, cause that's, it really is so much more than our bodies. And yeah. I think that it's, I, I love it when people make that connection and they start to see that and, and realize that. And because it makes it much easier to interrupt that process when you know that it's not, it's not really about, it's not really about your body in that moment. Yeah. And once I started to see that it was kind of, I don't know, it was just so surprising where to see the, this pattern mm -hmm. that would happen in my mind where, you know, I was stressed out about, you know, whatever had not having nothing to do with my body. And hours before or yesterday, I felt I was feeling really good about my body. And suddenly this thing comes up and my, and my, I'm back to that groove of, um, something's wrong. And I, and the, the, what the way to fix it is to do something about my body. Mm -hmm. And and it was like seeing that and seeing that pattern and realizing that it was, it wasn't true, that whatever had happened had nothing to do with my body and my body changing wasn't gonna, you know, relieve my, you know, take away whatever crisis or whatever was happening. Um, the awareness, it, it made me, it was easier to kind of almost laugh at it, you know, or at least kind of see the, be a little amazed by it and, and to see it. And then eventually, you know, it, it's been a, a few months now and I just, it doesn't happen quite like that or, or not, certainly not as much. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm pretty aware of it when it does. Good. Excellent. What yeah. were some highlight moments for you along the way? Yeah, I think, you know, um, really being able to, to have a process to look at, you know, what is it that I love to do? You know, what is it that, that, um, that fill that I want to fill my life with and seeing, like we were talking about before those conditions that I was putting into place that like, well, I, I can't do that until, you know, until whatever. And realizing that, that it just didn't need to be, you know, that, um, I remember like one of the examples was that I kept saying I, I wanted to go on a beach vacation and I kept putting off doing that because I didn't want to spend all my time in a swimming suit and I didn't want to. And so like sometime in the future, I'd either feel more comfortable with it or my body would look different. And then I would go, you know, on a beach vacation and just seeing that and going, what kind of crazy, you know, in, in a loving way, um, but just seeing that it just didn't, there was no reason for me to hold back and not do that. And I, I had a vacation. It wasn't quite a beach vacation, but it was a lake vacation this summer that I spent, you know, 80 or 90% of the two week vacation in my swimming suit. And it was, it was like, it was great. And it was no thing, you know, to be just out on the paddleboard, out on the boat, swimming, doing whatever. And, you know, I liked my new swimming suit and it didn't matter. My body hadn't changed and it was fine. And it didn't hold me back from what I wanted to do. And like thinking about family photo photos, like I've been wanting to do a photo shoot of our whole family and kept putting it off. And I feel, you know, I feel kind of sad that I missed, you know, a lot of opportunities to have more photos, like professional photos of our whole family, because I didn't want to, I wanted to wait till my body looked differently. Mm -hmm. And so, so those are kind of big things and just being able to be, and, and so those were things along the way. And then towards the end, just being able to, to see in that short amount of time, how much more free I felt just being able to, to have let go of these, of these rules that I had for myself, you know, and be able to, to dance around my kitchen or say what I thought. I mean, so it wasn't, that's the part that kind of went beyond the body part that I felt like I could you know, I'm, a, I'm an almost 50 year old woman and I, 
I'm free and I didn't see it. You know, I can, I can tell people what I really think and I can ask for what I really want and I can go do the things I really want. And I have immense privilege. Um, and I wasn't letting myself really have a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. I remember the, I remember the vacate, the trip that you went on and you see, you came back and you were like, and I was in my bathing suit the whole time and it was no big deal. Um, yeah. and I, yeah, I thought that was so great. And I think, I feel like it was you who had said that you were always the, were you always the photographer for your family? But then because you were always the photographer, that meant like you weren't always in the pic, you weren't in the right. pictures very much. So, right. um, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember that. And so it's so great to hear. So did, have you been in more pictures then? I've been in more pictures. I still, you know, it, um, I still want to do a family, um, photo shoot. Yeah. And the, the thing that's been, you know, is, is just busyness and summer vacation, but I, I do want to have an actual, you know, professional photography and, you know, we, we had it done and that's, you know, I had one done, oh, maybe like seven years ago and it was just for the kids, you know, so that like I wasn't in it. And so it's just all of those little ways that, um, that I tried to just believe that, you know, there was going to be something better. Like it was like what I was waiting for. Yeah. Like, like I'm not, I was waiting for this thing that just wasn't ever going to happen. Yeah. You know, and I think a big part too, you know, being that this is the year that I turned 50, that there's just this reality that, that I'm, I, as well as all of us are aging and our bodies aren't going to stay the same and they're not going to, um, I'm not going to have a 20 year old or 30 year old or even 40 year old body. And, and I'm on this and I'm grateful that I have life and that I'm, I have the, um, the gift of being able to get older. And, mm -hmm. and so it, it's also feels like the work that we did is helping me to accept that part, you know, that, that I, you know, my, my body's going to continue to change my hair, my face. And that's just is, it just is the way it is and trying to pretend that it's not or trying to have it be that that's some bad or big thing or bigger than it is just doesn't serve me of, of wanting to be able to, to be alive and enjoy, enjoy the way my body feels, enjoy this life. And so that feels, um, that feels like there was just, I kept realizing that throughout, there wasn't like a moment or a certain thing, but I kept being able to see these ideas I had about my body and how I wanted it to be. And these ideas of, of regret almost for having not attained it earlier. And, and there's just being able to see that it just was a, it was a cultural thing. And it was also just a fallacy mm -hmm. that I was going to be able to, to trick aging and that I was going to be able to, you know, all of that stuff. And so, um, that feels like it was a gift too, because that's just something, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, hopefully my fingers crossed have many more years and my body's going to continue to change and all of it will. So to be able to not be afraid of that feels like a really huge gift. Yeah, that's huge. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you talked about the aging piece. Cause I think that that is, you know, I don't, and I don't, I think anywhere 40 onwards, you start to get that sense that like, well, you should be, you should hide or you should be invisible or you should do whatever you can to try and stop the aging process. And yeah. so I think, you know, hearing about how you've been able to accept and embrace and just be, be appreciate where you are and accept that things are going to keep changing. Uh, that's huge. That's so, that's so good. We need, we need more age positivity in this world. Yes. Good. Yes. So how does this all feel for you? You know, I feel like, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't sure signing up, you know, what, you never know what the whole, what the whole thing's going to be like or what you're kind of jumping into. And, um, but there was this desire to kind of, to, to be able to, I don't know, just find a way through. I mean, I, I believe that there was a different way of being. And so, at this, you know, once I was in it, just feeling so grateful that I'd taken kind of the plunge. And even though not knowing what exactly it was going to be or what the experience was going to be, and I didn't find it, you know, I asked, I had a friend who had gone through and worked with you before. 
And so I asked her and, and, and she said that it was great and that you were great. And, and she said that it was, you know, that there was a fair amount of work involved. And so I was a bit, you know, having, being busy, I was a bit, um, nervous about that part, but it didn't, you know, it was actually, you know, I felt the commitment and I think I felt or started to see early on the, the, um, how it was helping me. Mm -hmm. And so then the desire to just keep putting the time into it and really doing the exercises and staying on top of it, not, like not letting it get away from me as far as getting kind of behind. And I'll also say though, that you were really gracious throughout that you never, everybody is where they are and that there is no kind of, um, feeling of that you were supposed to be working harder or showing up more or anything like that. It was really an acceptance of that all of us were exactly where we needed to be and it was going to come, you know, and we were going to find the time when we did. But, um, but I have to say that it, I feel like I got for everything I put into it more, you know, in exponentially more back. And, uh, and so I just feel a lot of gratitude and I have to say, you know, I was spending a lot of time, not only with, with the work with you and with the program, but I was spending a lot of time reading other kind of body positivity books and intuitive eating and listening to podcasts. And that was another moment, you know, towards the end where I was having the sense that I needed to kind of take a break from a lot that I really needed to, to go and pursue all these other things that I love and that are interesting to me. And, um, and I, and we talked about it and it was this idea not to feel like guilty that I was like not spending enough time, but that that was where I was. And I had reached the point where it had sunken in so much that, yeah, I could go back to the other podcasts I liked and I could read other things and I could go paint and, wow. and, um, it just, it's amazing to me how much transformation there was in such a short time. Amazing. That's so good yeah. to hear. Yeah, I love it. I love kicking people out of the nest. <laughs> I think sometimes people feel guilty, but I'm like, I don't want you having to be into this stuff forever. Like, I think it's yeah. really important to, you know, come away with a sense of um, wanting to fight for justice and equality on a, you know, on a, on a broader level in the world. But I, I don't, you know, for on an individual level, you know, the, the work should be should be done. And then it's like, you've got all these other things that you, that I want you to be doing with your time and not, not yeah. spending time staying in the body image bubble. Like it's get out of the nest. So I love, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love telling people that too. <laughs> like when they say, Oh, I don't, yeah. I'm not listening to your podcast. I'm like, good, good. <laughs> if you don't need it, don't listen to it. <laughs> It'll still be here if you need a refresher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I right. like that practical aspect to it, that this was something, it wasn't something that like I have to now do for the rest of my life. And, you know, I should spend five hours a week doing that. I mean, it really, um, that's the part that surprises me so much that how much change there was in the way that I see myself and the way that I see the world, the way that I'm just living in, in a relatively, you know, short period of time. Amazing. How do you see yourself now? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I am, I'm imperfect. You know, I have my, the things that get me, um, you know, irritated. And then I, I have the things that I can look out and see a beautiful day and be amazed. And I'm just, I'm a normal, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> imperfect woman who has all kinds of things that I am excited about. And I, I oftentimes overwhelmed and it's just, it's, you know, it's hard to, it's this, it's, it's real. I mean, it feels like, you know, I'm, it's, uh, the, the thing that's shifted, the thing that's different is just not having all of those, um, you know, thoughts about, about it being all about my body and that that was what was, um, and if that only changed, either the thoughts about it or my body actually changing, then everything else would fall into place. And, you know, to now see that as an illusion. I mean, my life is still very messy in a good way. And there's all kinds of, of the regular um, ups and downs and struggles. And, 
And, and it is what it is. And it's not about how I look. It's not about, you know, my body. And there's a lot of freedom in that. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah. good. Uh, what is your advice to others who are listening? I, that the change is possible and that, um, and, but it, in order, and I think that change is possible even on a, a slower process, but, um, I'm grateful that I kind of got the, I don't know if I'd call it supercharged, but it, it had, I feel like I leapfrogged. I mean, I feel like I was able to do the work, um, through this program with you and really be thinking about these things and answering questions and doing the work to, to move through it in a more graceful kind of expedient way. And so I, I really, I, but the main message I think that change is possible because I think we oftentimes, especially if we've been doing something for a long time and I felt like I'd done this work for a long time and I'd spent a lot of time doing it and I think there was a part of me that didn't believe I could really change mm. that, that the, the, all these repetitive kind of thoughts that I just didn't believe it was possible. And it is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and I, and so it makes it kind of exciting to, to wonder what other changes are ahead. Good. Yeah. That's so great. Well, thank you so much. It's been, you you I mean you're wonderful to work with. You're you're such a pleasure to to coach and you always have really you always offered really amazing perspectives to help others too. And I thought that that was um that was always something really special that you brought was just uh, you, you have you have a lot of wisdom and perspective that you were able to um help help me then help others even even more like you, you're you're a great teacher I don't know if you realize that but you are <laughs> as well okay. yeah, I didn't really, you know I didn't mention about the the community and the the coaching I mean that was the you know the community was a, a really great thing to be able to have these other women who are in similar but different and to have a place where you're sharing and also the coaching was just about you know I I, I missed it when it was over in mm -hmm. the fact that it was just to be able to have somebody that that's helping you think about where you are and, and what you're trying to do, not just about your body, but just because it's all interrelated. I mean, that was the part that was great to, to really realize is that this was not about simply, I mean, it's about my body, but it's not about my body. And so, um, so both of those things, I don't think I fully knew what, what great, uh, assets they would be, you know, the, the coaching with you as well as the community. Amazing. Yeah. So good. Well, it's been such a pleasure. You are wonderful. I know that you're going to keep having just great freedom in your life and you'll be such, you are, you are such a great role model to your kids and will continue to be so. Uh, so I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share your story today. Well, thank you, Summer. It was a pleasure. Rock on, Michelle.